This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. We're reviewing a recent test. We've got a problem where we want to develop moment equations in terms of x. Now we've got a beam loaded as shown, and we Read the problem very carefully. For both equations, x1 and x2 should be measured from the left end of the beam, and x3 should be measured from the right. This is really a logical way to break this up and solve this problem. And what we want is an equation for the internal moment at any point x from the reference points, one on the left end, one on the right end. So, we're given everything, the reactions, the loads, and the reference points. So we want to do, for the first part, a free body diagram, which is the key to the highway, solving these problems. And then we want to write a fully simplified equation for the moment in the section from x equals 5 to x equals 17 like it says here. Okay, so that means we're going to make a cut somewhere in here, anywhere in here in this span, in this portion of the span. So that's going to be my cut at some distance x from the left end. So I'm going to analyze the left end of the beam for my internal moment. So I draw a free body diagram that includes everything on the left side of that cut. So it looks like this. And there I make my cut at point, some arbitrary point, some distance x from the left end. So there's where I make my cut. And let me put my internal moment on there to begin with. That's a positive internal moment, creating compression on the top, cupping, holding water, smiling, whatever. Then I complete my free body diagram. I'm considering the entire portion of the beam to the left of that cut. Just because I'm in that span, I have a discontinuity at this 19 kips and where the distributed load starts. But I can write one equation for any, any moment in between those two points, between the 19 kip load and the 12 kip load. But I've still got to consider for equilibrium this 13 kip foot moment. And I've got to consider five feet to the left, to the right of that, this 19 kip load. Then I've got a distributed load of 3 kips per foot in this area. Let's put some dimensions on here. Okay, this is the dimension x. We're going to call it x2 because it's really the second area between discontinuities. I'm just going to call it x. It's the distance from the left end per the instructions. Okay, so I do know this fixed distance from the 13 kip foot moment to the 19 kip support is 5 feet. And if it's 5 feet from the left end of that point and it's, nine, it's x feet from the left end to where I've made my cut, then this distance is x minus 5. Now I can put a concentrated moment resultant for that distributed load right here. And that load is going to be 3 kips per foot times five, x minus 5. So whatever distance I'm out away from the left end, the distributed load there at the center is 3 times x minus 5. It's base times height, it's just a rectangle, the area under that curve. I'm also going to need what this distance here is. Let me draw it in blue so it's a little bit clearer. To the cut, to that resultant, it's a rectangle, so it's half the 
width, half the base. So this distance right here is going to be, the total distance is x minus 5, but it's half of that because it's a rectangle right in the middle. So I've got that distance. So that's the kind of free body I need to analyze this problem. Now from then I just need to sum moments about the cut. Counterclockwise is going to be positive for this calculation. I've got 13 kip foot at the left end, which would um, is negative by my sign convention of this calculation. Negative 13. I come to the 19 kip load. It's trying to rotate clockwise, so it's negative for rotation. 19 is the force. And the distance is x minus 5 to the cut. And then I've got this resultant trying to rotate counterclockwise, so it's going to be positive. The force is 3 times x minus 5. That's fr. The distance is x minus 5 over 2, because it's a rectangle, half of the distance x minus 5. Then I've got my internal moment which is positive for internal moment sign convention which is also positive happens to be for this calculations assumption. So I've got plus m2. I could call this m2 really. I wanted a fully simplified equation so I do the math and I got negative 13 minus 19 times x plus 95 plus 3 halves, combine the 3 and the half, x minus 5 squared. I do the math on that and that becomes x squared minus 10x plus 25 now I write them all out. I've got negative 13 minus 19x plus 95 plus 1.5x squared minus 15x plus 37.5. I gather my common terms and I've still got the plus m2. I've now got, in rearranging, 1.5x squared minus 34x, which is 19x minus 15, negative 19 minus 15x. And then I add up all my constants, negative 13 plus, plus 95 plus 37.5, and I get 119.5 plus m. Therefore, m, I can just rewrite it as negative 1.5 x squared, just reversing all the signs there, plus 34 x minus 119.5. My units are kip feet. And I have a way of checking that. I'll do that here in a minute. I'm going to go on to the second part. It's real easy. I am asked for an equation for x3 from the right end in the distance between 0 and 5. So I've got x3 right here. A free body diagram is very simple. Looks like this. Make my cut. There's the beam. I have five kips up. It's my only force on that segment of the beam. X is measured from the right end. So X is always the distance to the cut. Then I put my positive moment for internal forces sign convention. That's positive M. And so it's a real simple calculation. Some of the moments about the cut. This is M3. 
is, and I'm going to assume counterclockwise positive like I usually do for my statics calculation. I've got now positive M because it creates compression on the top, cupping, holding water, or smiling a smiling beam. So it's negative by this calculation here for my sign convention. So it's negative M3. The 5 kips is trying to rotate it counterclockwise, so it's positive. 5 kips, and the distance is X to the cut. Therefore, M3 equals positive 5X. So I put that in the blank. 5x, my units are kip feet. Okay, and I have a real quick way of checking this thing. I would draw, because I'm so good at it, a shear and moment diagram. And that would look like this. I would draw a shear diagram like that, real quick. I've got zero shear at the end jumping up to 19 then I'm going down three kips per foot so that's going to be 19 divided by 3 or 6.333 feet I'm going down the total area under that curve which is 3 times 10 or 30 so I'm at 19 minus 30 which is going to take me to, I'm sorry, 1930 times 12 is going to give me 36. So I'm going down 36. So I'm going down to negative 17. Linearly at 6.33 I cross. So I've got a 6.33 distance to the zero shear point. And I'm going down to negative 17. Then the 12 kips is going to jump me up to negative 5. And the 5 kips up at the end is going to take it back to 0. Now I would also draw, what I'm after is a moment diagram. So I would draw a moment diagram that looked like this. That's going to be my max there in the middle. 6.33 from the 19 kip load. I put, because I want to make sure I get this started right, that's positive moment. Make a cut there. So that's the opposite of the way that externally applied. So I'm starting off at positive 13. Then I start sloping up, decreasing, going to flat right here at the zero shear line. And I'm going up by the area of that thing, which is one half base times height, which is one half 19 times 6.33, which works out to be 60.16, which puts me at a peak of 73.16. That's what I want to find out. Then I go down by this area, which is going to be. 5.666 times negative 17, which is going to take me to 25. If I subtract that from the 73.16, then I'm going to slope linearly this amount, this area, 5 times 5. So I'm going from 25, that takes me linearly down to 0. So I have some points I can check. I'm at 13 at this point, and I can check that with my first equation. Plug in x equals 5 and I get plug it into this equation here negative 1.5 x squared stuff and I get m is equal to 13 which is confirmed by my shear and moment diagram. If I plug in x equals 17 at the right end of that, that area between the 19 and the 12 but from x equals 5 to x equals 17, sure enough, I get m is equal to 25. And I can even plug in x equals 5 plus 6.33 to check that maximum value. So that's 11.33. Plug that into that equation, 
and I get M is equal to 73.16. So that checks. Real simple check at this uh, in this uh, span on the right end from x equals 0 to 5 measured from the right at x equals 0 m equals 0 which is confirmed at x equals 5 m equals positive 5 25 confirmed by my shear and moment diagram 